Spinarkle at Rutgers. This ends a streak of four games in a row that the uh, Orangemen have been trailing at halftime. Three of those have been losses. Tonight they lead by seven on the strength of Deshaun Williams' outstanding first half. He had 16 points. He's playing like he did when Syracuse won the preseason NIT title. A two-time All-Stater at Patterson Catholic here in New Jersey. Six of 12, made four three-pointers. And uh, Jim, you know, they didn't do much from the field aside from behind the arc. So Syracuse, much of their offense coming from three-point range. And I think they were patient enough to go out and test the, the outside. And they were looking down low, but Rutgers was collapsing fairly well. And it's always good to see a guy like Williams come back to the home area and, and play well. Because as a player, you really want to come back with people, fans, and friends, and family around and show them that you can st still knock them back from long range. Deshaun Williams, 10th in all-time scoring at Syracuse University, which, as you know, has an illustrious history in basketball. Williams, just a junior. Josh Pace, by the way, went to the Syracuse locker room, and a steal by Shumpert right off the first possession. Shumpert spinning, put it up, and made it. And then, see, that's one of the instinct-type plays where... Shumper can just go down the floor, and the eye in that situation may not be a, as big a factor as when he has a straightaway jump shot, and you have time to think about what you're doing. Sherrod, nice dish. Rashad Kent, and there's going to be a foul. As Dwayne put a rope on him, tied him down. You need more than a rope, though, to stop Kent. He is so powerful down below. He really establishes great position. Here comes Shepard down the left side. Watch the spin and the quick delivery to get away and split two Rutgers defenders. Syracuse by nine. Their biggest lead was a dozen at 18-6. Rutgers has never led in this game. And the loose ball comes off to Rutgers. Three-pointer is good as the Scarlet Knights get a three from Jerome Coleman, who was quiet in the first half. He's got eight now. One of the things, they have to make sure if they're going to take those shots, Rutgers has to look down low first. Craig Fourth missed the shot. Battle on the boards, taken down by Ricky Shields. I mentioned Josh Pace of Syracuse. He's got a cut on his eyelid, expected to return. That's the word from the Syracuse sideline. a long-range three that time from Jerome Coleman, about a 25-footer. I'm not sure that's the shot that Gary Waters wants to take with that much time left on the shot clock. Good hands by Kent defensively. Kent stole it. Good footwork to keep it alive. Here's Sherrod. Coleman, hard to the basket. Weird shot. Exciting rebound it. Exciting played a nice first half on Wednesday night against UConn. Gave this building and the fans a nice lift that's all he has to do is find some spots on the floor good follow-up shot Ricky Shields with the pressure on the outside against James Theus in a five-second violation and both coaches up questioning the call but Jim Beheim wants his players to release a little bit quicker Get to your sets a little faster. Don't often see that call, but there it is. And of course, it'll touch to the on top of that just then. And stepping into Sean Williams way outside with a careless foul there. Defensively, Shields staying within striking distance. Well, not really right there. They may have backed off enough. I think they're going to keep the hand. You see the official, though, going horizontally, left to right, and that's the count. Once he's into it, you have to basically do something with the basketball. Sean Williams has three personals right now. He's their leading scorer with 16. Down low, it's kicked. And they'll get a new shot clock. Rutgers has been playing from behind all night long. They're 10 and 1 in this building this year. They have not had a win over a 15 team since 1982 when they defeated West Virginia on just about the same day, February 1st of 1982. A long bomb that time by Jerome Coleman, and it's 
a one-point game. Terrific use of the skip pass. Also, avoid going around the perimeter. Skip once or twice, and you'll have an opening. Williams tries to answer, and he does. Wow, we had a great angle on that from over his right shoulder. You could tell immediately that that ball was going to go through cleanly. Five three-pointers for Deshaun Williams. Holman misses. Theus runs it down. And finally, fourth has it. Theus driving, and he had Shepard on the baseline, but Axani stepped in to deflect it. Actually, Theus with a nice little shovel pass just then. Jim Beheim likes the effort coming down the floor because Theus was going to his left. Axani stayed right with him. Shepard, and he got fouled. Oof. I think it was Sherrod going by, was it? Jim, there's no doubt Shepard is a little bit hesitant, a little bit, you know, he's just not as smooth as we're used to seeing. See, so there's a concept of playing basketball, with, and people say, well, you, you have to think this game through, and that's true, you have to think it through, but there's a time when the thinking turns into instinct, and you just do things instinctively, even though you are thinking about it, and I think what Shepard is doing, and this is not a knock on him, Mike, is that when he's catching the ball, there has to be a process of saying, what's going on here, my eyes, now he's thinking a little too much, and it's not instinctive, it's just a little bit of a delay. Uh, from the free throw line, he's perfect. Four for four, he's got 10 points. And that's why I think he's trying to get a little closer to the basket because the instincts will take over with bang, bang type of plays rather than catch, think about your shot, and then shoot it where you're less effective as a player. Every time Rutgers threatens, to tie this game or take a lead, Syracuse has a little burst. And that's where uh, Rutgers is depending on the crowd to stay with him. Well, great defensive play there by Williams to come back into the cup. Deshaun Williams to Dwayne. Oh, what a hit he took. That's going to be an extra shot right there. From Sean Axani. And uh, Dwayne is back up, and he seems to be okay. Play at the end of the game against Connecticut, where we had a problem here with Rutgers. But I think there's a little extra muster here at the second part of this play. You see that second hit? Thought it was a good foul. Yeah, but it's the second part of it that I don't like, though, Mike. I mean, the first part I'm okay with it. It's aggressive. But then when you start coming down on people when they're in the air and out of balance, and you're coming down across the top of their back of their shoulders and their head, that's where their officials have to really get in there quickly. Axani will take a seat. Dwayne's got nine points now. Syracuse back up by seven, and now eight. Well, the officials called it a two-shot foul, and I left it at that. That's why I'm sitting next to you. <laughs> you mean I got one right? I can't believe it. And there's an elbow. That time Eugene Dabney and Craig Forth were battling down low on an immediate whistle. Eugene Dabney, his second. So 16.07 left in the game. And Syracuse leads by eight. And both coaches working the officials a little bit, seeing where they're going to have a little post-game meal together and <laughs> enjoy them, which I doubt is going to occur. And another whistle, this time on Jerome Coleman. That is the third team foul, now fourth on Rutgers. Timeout on the court under 16 minutes remaining. Deshaun Williams putting on a show. The Orangemen lead by eight. Syracuse leads 44-36 with 15-57. Remaining the 11th time these two schools have met in Big East play. The Orangemen have won eight of the first 10. They swept the series last year. They have the first one this year. Last year, a one-point game right here at the rack. Came down to the final seconds. Let's take a look at shooting the rock, brought to you by Rolling Rock. Grab the rock. And the three-pointers have been the difference for Syracuse. Seven of 13, 54%. Deshaun Williams has five of those. His career high is seven. His career high is 28 points. And Deshaun Williams has 19 right now. Goes to the basket, off balance, missed it. Dwayne tried to put it up. Craig Ford turned around, and he drew a foul. I'm not sure if Dwayne just then tried to put that up, Mike, or did he try to pass it? If he tried to pass it, it was a 
a pretty decent look across the court as he was off balance. It may, in fact, have been a shot, but either way, the end result was pretty good with fourth ending up with it at the free throw line. Great fourth way off on the free throw. Got one point tonight. We're at the Lewis Brown Athletic Center on the campus of Rutgers University, Piscataway, New Jersey. Mike Crispino, Jim Spinarco, glad you could join us. And great fourth has one of two free throws. To get more information on your favorite Big East team, go online at www.bigeast.org for all the basketball conference news from around the Big East. And see if Rutgers can come back and answer here. Mike down 45-36. In traffic, it ends up in Sherrod's hands. Difficult oh. shot, front rim, tipped up. Eugene Dabney. Yeah, once again, that's what Rutgers has to do. I think what they're going to have to do against this 2-3 zone is look for the middle of the floor or put the ball on the floor for dribble with the perimeter guys and break somebody down on the perimeter so you have some numbers in the three-on-two half-court situations. Coleman in the face of Williams, and there's a holding call. And Rutgers has to be careful now. That's number six for Gary Waters' squad. And Syracuse is moving pretty well without the basketball. And they've had two situations already in this half where Rutgers has been called for that type of a walk the ball type of foul. That is four fouls on Mike Sherrod. And there's going to be a timeout on the court with Syracuse leading by seven. So foul troubles in the backcourt for Gary Waters. Take a timeout. We'll return to Rutgers. 45-38. The Orange by seven. Trying to protect their tenth ranking in the country. Now let's take a look at the BMW ultimate drive of the game. And it's Preston Shumpert on a steal, going all the way down the court and completing it with a great finish. That was the first play, first possession of the second half. After Rutgers had had troubles hanging on to the ball in the first half when they had 15 turnovers. 10 points for Shumpert. Good players find ways to work through adversity to get things happening for them. Blaney, nice up fake, goes to the basket, in some traffic, knocked down, loose again. Blaney came up with it, and there's going to be a Trump ball, I guess. Trump ball, <laughs> the possession arrow, Syracuse. Syracuse. Lost Dwayne in there for a second, I, didn't we? Got <laughs> I could, swallowed up. I couldn't see the ball. I couldn't see Dwayne for a second. All of a sudden, he pops up with it. Seven-point game. Dwayne lost it for the moment. Now he puts it up. And a whistle. That's going to be on Uwe Lamazana. That is the seventh team foul with 14.37 remaining. So a long way to go. The Syracuse team, not one of the better free throw shooting teams in the league. They're only 11th in the Big East at 68%, but they're going to get a lot of opportunities in the second half of this game. Yeah, you're absolutely right. Jim Boeheim realizes that, and that's why you would think that they'll look to keep kicking the ball down low, and if it's not there, then kick it out to guys like Williams, who's had the hot hand shooting the ball. It goes for North, though, if you don't knock at least one back. It's an advantage wasted at that point. Dwayne does waste the opportunity to get two, and it's still a seven-point game. Here's Juo Wigan with it. Here's number 13. Kicks inside, and it's taken away, but there's going to be a whistle. Uh -oh, and the crowd with a mock cheer. Finally, they called one against the other guys. <laughs> you know, it was only a matter of time before the whole building looked at it. Up at that seven up there for Rutgers. And now they have three for Syracuse. Wigan thought about it. Now he'll hold it up. See a little skip. Pretty good move. Oh, what a drive that time. Jerome Coleman. With a jump step, slices inside, and it's 45-40. See, you have, people don't think you can dribble and be effective against his zone. You can dribble and be effective if you do something with the basketball like Coleman just did. He beat his man and went for it. Jump with 16-footer. He fell down. It was short. That's where I think he's having the problems with that 15-footer and out type of shot. Shumpert has played the entire game, though. There was some thought he might not play in this game. Long range three, and he's got it. That's 
Ricky Shields. And now all of a sudden, the sixth man is a factor in this building. It's a two-point game. Rutgers has never led. I think the mock cheer got the building wired up, to be honest with you, Mike. It helps if they knock it back two possessions. Here comes Big Kent. Watch out. Fourth. Throw it and it didn't go in. And now he'll have to shoot two. But a good foul by Craig Ford. It sure is. I mean, it's an aggressive foul from behind once again. But a guy you want to foul because Kent... We touched on only 36%, but these ones from behind. See, that's not a, that's nothing wrong with that. Kent just ran himself into, but he was under control. So nothing dirty, nothing unclean about that attempt there by Fourth to go after the basketball. It's when they go shoulder and above, Mike, when a guy's off the floor, so you really have to be careful at any level. Just the seventh free throw on the night by Rutgers, and there's Kent front running it. So his difficulties continue. 0 for 3 on the night. Rutgers 2 of 7 from the line. Here's Kent. Again, he front rimmed it. So that just barely got there, too. A two-point game. Drop back into it. Here's Shumper. Delaney, 4th. And fourth beats his man with a nice up fake. Craig Porth does his first field goal. Sure was, because he had to wait for Dabney to go flying by him just then. And he held the pivot foot down at the same time. Difficult to do that. A lot of big guys will shuffle that foot and drag it. Long range three again, and he knocks it down. Jerome Coleman now has 11 in the second half. He's feeling it. He sure is. And each and every one of those bombs wakes up the crowd even more here at the rack. A tough place to win. A kid from Robeson High in the Bronx. And Brooklyn, rather. They see transfer. Here is Deshaun Williams to fourth down low. It's loose. And it's on the floor. Fourth came up with it. Turn around. He missed it. He brought the ball down initially. That's what got him in trouble. The big guys have to catch that above the shoulders and keep it above the shoulders. Now Rutgers can take a lead. They haven't had one. Uh -huh. One more time. Can he do it? Oh, he does. Jerome Coleman is in the zone. He took the roof off this place with that one. Four three-pointers. And finally, Rutgers has a lead. They've been climbing uphill for 30 minutes. And aren't you the guy, Mike Cuspino, said this place doesn't get noisy? <laughs> fans out tonight. Pretty good range, a little hop. You see that little bounce after he shot the basketball? And now he can barely wait for the ball to get to him. Coleman across the court. Now that thing barely trickled the nets right there. He's got that bounce to his body to hop to his legs and now he's orchestrating the crowd and why not? Got a bunch of those people up just then. Huh? They think they're going to sit down for the rest of this game. 8,619 capacity crowd at the rack. Eleven forty remaining. Here's Theus, hard drive, and he lays it up and in. Uh, really gives Jim Beheim some good minutes on the floor. Terrific drive just then. He's done a good job at the defensive end all season long with the steals and the assists at the offensive end, and that time just blows by some people. And there's Williams again with a steal. Goes to the basket. He lost it. Stripped. Shumper put it up, and he got fouled. Wasn't textbook offensively, but Jim Bayon happy with the defensive effort, playing some passing lanes and taking a couple of gambles. And here Williams goes down the floor, and a little lost possession here for a second. Tries to get the shot up. Coleman comes back to strip, and Shumper in a pretty good spot. Ends up at the line for Jim Bayon. And Shumpert has been perfect from the line tonight. Not shot the ball well from the field, but he's five for five from the line. Preston Shumpert has both of his free throws. Syracuse back up by two, 11-18 remaining.
and advance. We in early January, Rutgers beat Georgetown in overtime here at the rack, and to end the month, they took out Connecticut, 61-53, with their second win over a top 25. Gary Waters had been looking for that, hoping his team could knock off good teams, and when they did, it was a positive. When you're developing a program and you have the young men that are uh, inexperienced that are working for success and you play a top-rated team like that and have the success that they had in that game, you got to feel good about all that occurred. Yes, he did, and I'm sure his players did, but now you've got to repeat it. The expectations will go up a little bit for Rutgers. They're trying to do it tonight, trailing the Orange by two. And this would be a great week for their program and turning point in the early career of Gary Waters here for Rutgers if they could pull a double upset. Here's Coleman. Now Ricky Shields to shoot long range. Oh, he drained it. Oh, the confidence is starting to mount here for Rutgers from long range. Coleman starting it off. They have to fix the net. They've been burning that thing so frequently in the last two or three minutes from long range. They're back up by one. Rutgers 12th in the league in shooting from behind the arc has been on target they, tonight. They keep baiting you to come out and get them, and that's what usually opens up a driving situation. We'll see how Syracuse defends. That is the sixth three-point field goal by the Scarlet Knights in the second half. Fourth blocked by Dabney once. Count the bucket, and he'll get a free throw on the putback. Beautiful cross pass by Williams to get that started. We're fourth on the left side of the floor. That came from the right wing, that initial pass. And here's Dabney's reaction to it for the first time. It goes up, blocks it well, but look at four. That time, you noticed, he did not bring the ball down towards his waist and below. He brings it to his chest to get a little momentum and then keeps it up a little higher this time. One time before he got it stripped in the lane, he actually brought it almost down to his knees to neutralize his height. Greg Fourth has not had success at the line tonight. He misses. Syracuse by one. Ten and a half minutes remaining. Wigan to Shields in traffic. Wild shot. Loose. Taken by Theus. One of the things you kind of forced at the end of the basketball game was they got a little rattle. Let's see if they stay with it. Deshaun Williams misses. Shields up. Theus. Baseline, Shepard, and he got rocked by Kareem Wright. 285-pound center blasted Shepard on the baseline. Well, not for the faint of heart to come through the lane. And the big muscles are in there for Rutgers. Both teams playing it aggressively, three and four feet from the basket. So Shepard, who has made hay at the free throw line tonight, once again, perfect seven of seven. You're watching Syracuse and Rutgers, Big East basketball on a Saturday night at Lewis Brown Athletic Center. Mike Crispino along with Jim Spinarco. And Shepard's first miss from the free throw line after going seven for seven. And they've wound it up in the second half. Huh? Six of nine after a two for 11. Now you can't really live on it the whole half, though. I think you have to start going towards the basket. They're going to call something down low. Craig Fourth whistled for the foul. That's his first. He's having some difficulty down there. Fourth outweighed by 40 points by Kareem. 40 pounds, I should say, by Kareem Wright. But another turnover by Rutgers on the inbounds. It goes Dwayne who got a hand on it. Here's Williams. Kick back to Delaney, wide open three, count it. Turnovers add up to problems, there's no getting around it. Every time Rutgers threatens to get control of the game, Syracuse bounces right back. Well, that's a sign of good teams, especially on the road. You have to answer with good looks. And I think Rutgers has to try to go against this man-to-man -man defense towards the basket a little. The Wigan in traffic, count the bucket. That's why you go to the basket. You chip away at the lead, you stop the clock, you get some confidence. And I think almost as important, Mike, for this team, for Rutgers, it opens up the perimeter again when you don't have anything down low. Very tough shot by Wigan going through the lane. Felt a little body against Theus. Next thing you know, you're in pretty good shape because you're going to the line. There's the body bump. Good call from the official. It works all around for Rutgers. 
And Wigan made a difficult shot, that's for sure. Just a freshman. And a three-point play. He's got eight points. Two-point Orangeman lead. Nice switch up here defensively. Rutgers did this against UConn a little bit in the second half, switching up their defenses. Oh, that's an extra step, though, yeah. With Sean Williams floating through. <laughs> Reminiscent of your NBA career, the way he got across the lane there. Saying I used to travel a bit? No, oh, I just mean you could cover a lot of court. <laughs> that time he, got a, he didn't get away with it. Back to the 2-3 for Syracuse. They'll want to look to try to either skip pass against it or look to break somebody down off the dribble. And once you get by somebody, you have a three on two underneath the 15 foot range. Here we go. Bowman inside. Here you go. Deals it off and up goes Rashad Kent. Fouled by Craig Ford. Once again, Mike, it's getting by that. If you're going to play a 3 2 defense, and it's really a 2 3, but they come out with the, the lower guy far out on the floor. Once you break them down, you see Shumper jumped into the screen just then. But that's how you break it down, either pass or get through. And now all of a sudden you see it's a two-on-one. It's Kent and Coleman going against fourth in a five-foot area on the floor. And that's how you have to break people down. And a breakthrough for Rashad Kent. His first free throw is one of five. Now, it's, it's got to be a mental thing after a yeah, while. It sure is, because, you know, actually, his free throw form is not that bad for a guy who's shooting that kind of percentage. Oh, look at that. Oh, he's got them both. He's on a roll. Two of six. Buckle up. This may give them a lift. Tied at 57. 2-1-2 two, 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 two defense looking for a quick trap. Nice pass there by Delaney to get rid of it. May have gotten away with a step, too. Delaney intercepted a pass headed for Theus. Here's Shields, and Theus had the follow. Yep, nice switch up by Gary Waters just then. When something good happens to your team, come back and change the defenses up a little bit. Come down the floor in a hurry. Shields puts the pressure on with the basketball. Theus reaches it around to grab him. Ricky Shields, a freshman, goes to the line. Shields didn't get the first. Rutgers with 10 fouls, and Syracuse at eight right now. So, decent free throw shot in the last eight minutes and 17 seconds. And there's an offensive foul call. Going to be fourth, I believe, moving around up front. The big guy trying to set a high screen. And that's, I guess I don't have to tell you whether Jim Bayon agrees with that call or not. Fourth picking up his fourth. Not easy for me to say, is it? And so, to the line will go Rutgers, where they've only made five of 12. It's crunch time now down the final... 8.15 of the game, and they get the first. Ricky Shields has given the Scarlet Knights a one-point lead. Jason McCoy checks in, number 21, the freshman from Houston, Texas, for Rutgers, and Billy Selick out of Jessup Valley, Pennsylvania, for the Orange. Shields has had a solid second half, eight. 19 on the game. Once again, something good happens at the line. They come back with their 2-1-2. Oh, two. very close. Kent, once again, all over the place. Pressure from the Scarlet Knights. And a timeout by Jim Beheim. He's right in Quet Twainy's face over in their huddle. Gary Waters and Rutgers have been fighting from behind all night long. They have a two-point lead. 8.06 left here at the rack. Big day in college basketball. And still in progress, Duke leading Clemson. Kansas big over Colorado. Cincinnati knocked off in wow. Milwaukee. Whew. Florida routing Mississippi State. Oklahoma in overtime over the Longhorns. Alabama at halftime. How about that for a low-scoring game? Oklahoma State upset by Kansas State in the Big 12. Kentucky rolling over 
South Carolina. UCLA will get underway in just about an hour. Gonzaga at Portland. Arizona trailing Stanford by 10 at halftime. And uh, Connecticut and Miami in a barn burner one-point game. And no surprise down in Miami. And the 10th team foul on Rutgers. So Preston Schumpert goes to the line to shoot two. And you get the feeling that a lot of free throws are going to be shot. It's going to take a while to play this seven minutes and 56 seconds because of the aggressive style it's picking up here. Schumpert has only three field goals on the game. But he's got 14 points. He's made eight of nine from the line. Nine of ten. Under eight minutes remaining. Timeout on the court. Back to Rutgers. Gary Waters and Jim Beheim. Rutgers and Syracuse tied. Hungry. Mike Crispino, Jim Spinarkel at the rack tonight. We're tied at 59. Syracuse led by as many as 12 in the first half. Got off to a great start. 8-0. 18-6. to six. Led at halftime. But... Rutgers started to get it on track from behind the arc, and they've tied it up at 59 apiece with 7.56 remaining. And they're a scrappy bunch. There's no question about that. They proved that this week earlier against UConn with that win, and they're doing it again right now. Gary Waters came here from Kent State after many years at Ferris State, his alma mater. He said this is going to be a new direction here. It's going to be family first class and a steal by Shumpert. Another one for Syracuse. Goes all the way, the reverse, no good. Tipped, no good. Shumpert in traffic. And Preston Shumpert will go to the line again. And Shumpert, as we've touched on, struggling with the glasses all evening long from the floor, really. But defensively, it hasn't stopped him from playing some passing lanes and making some nice steals. Here you see him flick and push the ball ahead. And he knows he's going to get crushed right here if he goes straight up. But he decides to go across and look for the reverse and just misses it. But now, all of a sudden, because he's working hard, he's doing some good things on the floor, and he's getting the payback. And Shumpert got the roll. Syracuse up by one. I think I've seen more passes stolen out of the passing lanes than I've seen in a long time in this one game. Well, when you play the zone like Syracuse does, that's one of the things you will get. You're allowed to cheat a little bit because you know there are always basically two guys behind you, so it does allow the passing lane to be a little bit more friendly to you. At 11 of 12 for Schumper. From the line alone, in traffic. Sonny tried to put it up, and there's a whistle. Going to be on Cleft Dwayne. Jim Bayham saying, how can the outside official make the call when it's happening inside? Well, let's take a look. We'll see. Here's some good penetration again. Tough shot. Yeah, that's a good call. That's a good call, and it's good work from the officials. So Sean Axani will go to the line. He's only got two points. And the foul line troubles of Rutgers could cost them in this game. Another miss. That time he's got it, one of two. First game when they played, Hughes was 19 of 26 from the, free, uh, from the free throw line. Rutgers was only 13 of 22, so they have had some problems at the line. Rutgers and Kemp has two. Shumpert, nice dish to Billy Selick, who laid it up and in, and he's going to get a free throw, too. One of the things Syracuse has been doing real well is moving without the basketball. And it's one of those things, it's almost a lost, a lost art in basketball anymore with guys cutting away from the basket and going strong. And it was Shumpert who came around the lower screen real strongly to create an opportunity for his teammate. Feel like letting them know that. Syracuse with 7-0-1 remaining has a three-point lead. Wiggins sits down. Mike Sherrod, who's got four fouls, re-enters the game. Selick misses, cannot get the three-point play. And it's a three-point game. Sherrod, Jerome Coleman wearing number 11. 
Ricky Shields, the freshman, from way downtown, missed everything. The shot Kent in traffic and a whistle. Kent's going to go to the line. Kent gets a lot of opportunities. It's unfortunate for Rutgers that he doesn't knock him down on a regular basis because he's so strong down low and he's so good at getting offensive positioning. Maybe that'll give him a little help there, but he's going to take a look from there. Two free throws for Rashad Kent. Uh-oh. <laughs> Just got three in a row, is that right? And he's starting to knock him back now. Well, you, you can get on a roll from that charity strike. You can. It makes him a different player if he can knock back free throws. He has gone to the line an awful lot this year. 136 times coming into this game. One out of two ups his average. Kent now. Three of eight. Baseline jumper. Shuffert. And once again, he'll go to the foul line. And Coleman that time tapping the elbow. And Shuffert used the baseline pretty well to free himself up. And the Orangemen have taken the Rutgers crowd out of it for the moment as Gary Waters looks on. They're watching Syracuse Rutgers, 6.33 remaining from the Lewis Brown Athletic Center in Piscataway, New Jersey. Mike Crispino, Jim Spinarco. It's been a while since Rutgers has beaten a top 10 team. In fact, it's been 20 years, West Virginia. In 1982, Rutgers has had four wins all time against top 10 teams. Preston Shumpert has been outstanding on the line tonight, and a foul by James Theus. We've had our share of fouls, haven't we? That's his fourth, and that. 30 feet away from the basket, Jim. Right. No reason for that, and Jim Beheim's going to let him know that. So from the line, Ricky Shields, and it, uh, right now it is, has become a free throw shooting contest. 6.23 left. And Shields has both of them. He's 5 of 7 on the night. Give Rutgers an opportunity to set up. Two, one, two, looking for some traps, deflections, or steals. Sean Williams has been quiet. Oh, Kent rejected him. And don't come into his house, in this house, is what Mr. Kent was just delivering. Well, Sean Williams thought he had a clear path to the goal, but no. On the outside, a whistle blows. Here comes the strong drive by Williams. Look at Kent, line it up and swat it out of there. It's the third on Billy Selick, and Rashad Kent gets a chance once again. It's a two-point game. Under six minutes remaining. Kent got the roll. Another double-double for Rashad Kent. 21 of them in his career. That one back rims. Shumpert has it, so it's a one-point. Syracuse lead. Shumpert on the run. Deshaun Williams from outside. No good. Up on the board. Sherrod couldn't get it. Kent did. They got numbers. Uh -oh. back the other way and a whistle as Syracuse beat the press and Syracuse taking advantage of it fans loving the fast break opportunities Rutgers getting it defensively and going but the quick answer and no balance Gary Waters wants some balance when you see three or four guys going down the floor somebody has to stay home so here, come, here comes the fast break. Everybody's coming down the floor. That's great. You got guys coming down, but nobody sits back defensively. And we're tied again. James Theus 
has got five points. Oh, a little mistake down the other end. Theus taking advantage of it. And Theus has them both, so the Orangemen back on top. Jim Beheim's been in a few of these in his career <laughs> on the road. More than one or two. He's a cool customer, no doubt. Generally, when you have a lot of fouls called, too, my guys have trouble getting here offensive games, but there have been some guys who've been able to play offensively. Deshaun Williams reaching in. That's his fourth. You know, every time you reach, when you're in the double bonus, you better be sure when you reach. He had deflected the ball, became loose for a second. He's the push, he kicks the ball loose, and he gets called for pushing off with the left hand there. It's a tough call. That's why he's just questioning it with the officials. And the free throw goes awry from Mike Sherrod. He stepped away from the line that time. You take a look at that number there. Four personal fouls on Williams. Sherrod has to sit on the line and stay on the line right here. Follow through. That's and better because his shoulders went towards the basket that trip. That's going to fall over the front rim. We're tied once again. And Delaney almost caught, caught going back court. He had one foot across the line. It looked like. And here's Williams. The ball across that. In the camp. Missed the shot. It's tipped up and in. Billy Selick. Somebody has to help Kent, though. When they drive at him and he goes for the block, somebody has to drop back for Rutgers to pick up the basketball. Two-point lead for Syracuse. They extend that zone way outside. Get on to Kent. Bashes his way down low, and Selick had a foul. He's like a Mack truck down there. He really is. He's so good at getting offensive position because of his size and his hold-off ability, which is perfectly legal in the college game and the pro game. He holds off, so he holds his body. He's so strong that it's hard to get around him once he gets you planted and pushed out of the lane and goes in a direction opposite of where the ball is. Oh, that one went in and out. So Rashad Kent, it's a... A real guessing game with him on the line. He missed his first four, made his next three, and he's missed three of his last four. And so he's due to knock one back. See, I don't think he follows. Oh, Selick lost the ball on a rebound. The putback no good. Rutgers all over the place. And they lost it on the offensive glass. Had some opportunities there, that's for sure. And I think it was just lost out of bounds by Coleman just then. I don't think anybody hit the basketball. You can't a walk, though. After a violation, the only time you can run the baseline like that is after a made shot. The Shumpert skips along there thinking, sometimes you forget. Preston Shumpert just told his coach, the referee didn't tell me. Well, he didn't have to tell him. You have to tell him. You have to know that one. Lamanzana going to the basket. And a foul called on the outside. If you've liked the fouls in close basketball games, this is the one to tune in. Now Syracuse loses their point guard, James Theus. We have seen a lot of fouls in this game, Jim, way outside. I mean, yeah. 20 and 30 feet away from the basket with players not even in their shooting uh, positions. And here's trying to stay away, but may have touched Ramanzana pretty good with the basketball at 6'10", can put the ball on the floor. Yeah, there's some contact. You have to call it. You have to, I think, I'm a big believer, Mike, you have to give the offensive player credit for making an offensive move. It's a learning experience, that's for sure. And Jim Beheim never stops coaching. That's the beauty of these college coaches that he hit the pinnacle of their careers. and. Solid coaches throughout the country. That's why they do it. They constantly coach the young kids. Amazana gets the roll. Spends, spends a lot of time in charitable endeavors in the country and up in the Syracuse area. Amazing numbers from Bayheim, one of the all-time winningest coaches. His Syracuse teams have had one losing record in conference play ever. Only three times they finished 500. Every other time they've been over 500. Oh, Delaney ran over Lama 
Lozano. You know, Mike, this is shaping up to be a pretty good finish if we ever get to that point. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how many fouls have been called, but there's... And this is a good call again. Almanzana is not in good position. He has not squared up to the sideline, so it's a good call from the officials. It's amazing, though. I mean, it's still 4-16 left in this, in this basketball game. You wouldn't say there's a flow to this one, would you? No, not at all. And that's why sometimes you look up at the scoreboard and you say when you have so many fouls, usually one team is in favor and they, they have a 9, 10, or 11 point lead. Here it's been nip and tuck the whole way. Well, one thing it does, it seems to me, is it takes the home crowd out of it because you slow everything down, you go to the free throw line, they have to be quiet for the most part. Yeah, but there's a couple of guys in section 211 who have four fouls on them. <laughs> Everybody's getting fouls. I'm gonna have to look at your foul ledger. Lamazana goes to the basket in traffic, missed the shot! The soft delivery, though, by Lamanzana. That makes it a shot that's allowed to be retrieved and tapped in. Great drive by the big fella. One point lead for Rutgers. Let's see if Syracuse can be patient here and get a good look. Josh Pace back in the game wearing number five. Deshaun Williams has been very quiet in the second half. Here he goes, right to the basket. Guess what? Uh, I believe there was a whistle. There was a whistle. Good drive, though, to the basket by Williams. Once again, you have to call it. If the offensive player goes through the basket and he gets hit, give it a call. And Lamazano has fouled out. I figured it out now. These are the whistles that were never blown in the Rucker League in the summer that we're hearing tonight. Seventy-one, seventy. Scarlet Knights, they lose Lamazano. James Theus is out of the game for Syracuse. Syracuse at 17 and five, but they've dropped three of their last four. Rutgers coming on 13 and seven, four and four in the conference. I was talking about Gary Waters when he arrived here, called it a new direction. Family, first class, and hard work, and they've shown that. This Scarlet Knights team does not get out work. Sean Williams. Ouch. Look at this in Connecticut, Miami, huh? <laughs> oh, man. Sean Williams has given Syracuse the lead. 326 left. They're up by one. Syracuse by one. Take a look at our best play of the game. Brought to you by Advance Auto Parts. The best part is our people. You know, Lamazana comes down. And watch how softly this shot hangs around the rim. And then Kent comes very close to touching it while it's over the cylinder, but gets away with it. And take a look at it here. Once again, soft shot. Get the second bounce. It does kick out away from the cylinder. And Kent going up high. And get up, guys. <laughs> You're in a basketball game. 59 free throws in the game. The Orangemen have taken 31, Rutgers 28. Orangemen have outscored Rutgers by seven on the line tonight. You know, Mike, I don't think there have been a lot of needless whistles either. I think the whistles have been the right whistles most of the night. How about that? That one was from outside Piscataway, and it came from Jerome Coleman. Everybody need Brunswick who knocked that one back from, huh? by two. Shumford wants to get it off, but he hands it to Fort. It's taken away. And on the break, here comes Shields. Goes up, gets fouled by Shumford. Whenever they hit the knot, the long ball. Rutgers, they get good things happening defensively. Coleman with a good kick out. From down the floor in a hurry, Shields delivers, gets his shoulders ahead of Shumford. And ends up going to the line. The trick here is making sure your shoulder, your right shoulder on that side of the floor gets ahead of the defender. Once again, he walks up the line, though, Shields that time. So Ricky Shields, you want to stay on that line, Mike, and make sure your shoulders are rolling towards the basket, not away from it. As one of two, this is the biggest Rutgers lead of the game. Three points, 75-72. Josh Pace has it. 
Hands to Deshaun Williams. Williams has five in the second half after a 16-point first half. Syracuse pretty patient right now as the clock gets down to 15 for them. Williams off balance shot front rim rebound by Axani. Here come the Knights. Yeah, let's see what kind of composure they had. Now at the end of the UConn game on Wednesday night, they had a little bit of a lead. They got rattled. They started throwing the ball around. Let's see if they've learned from that here in the last two minutes and seven seconds to go. And the cheers are showering down on the Scarlet Knights. Coleman. Defenders to the gut and then kick it out. Big time defensive effort here by Rutgers trying to put Syracuse away. Deshaun Williams off balance. Wow, no he whistle. lost it. No whistle. Everybody was looking for travel, I think. Out of control, and it's a six point Rutgers lead. See if they control is the key word right now. Minute and a half remaining. Jerome Coleman has electrified this place, and that might be on Deshaun Williams. And if it is, He's gone. Rutgers basketball is growing up in a hurry this week alone. And Gary Waters so far, if he can hold his team together for a minute and 28 seconds, we'll have a dynamite, I believe, sort of week. Huh? And here's that drive and the penetration. That gets the defenders going towards the middle of the floor. And look what Coleman is stepping it up and stroking it through. Coleman has tied his career high in three-pointers. He made seven the last time the two teams met, and he's got seven tonight. That was a bomb. When you have a bomb that goes off that deep on the floor, that deep into the game. 20 points in the half for Jerome Coleman. His career high is 26. He's had 25 tonight, and Ricky Shields will go to the line. 78% free throw shoot. Let's see what his shoulders do. They stay there that trip. The art of the free throw from Jim Spinalco. You ought to write a book. Shoot. You thought about it? <laughs> it's a simple concept if you do it properly. Shields, no. Yeah, he's got that one, too. Uh, it gives him an eight-point lead. And this crowd is on fire. Listen to him. Since 1991 with Bob Wenzel, 11 years later, Gary Waters is trying to make some noise. Yep. And Gary Waters did this against Connecticut, too. He kept his pressure on defensively a little bit. And Miami has beaten Connecticut by two tonight. So they've got two conference losses. Delaney in traffic, no good. Pace, loose, still loose. Scarlet Knights have it. 108 remaining and counting. Up by eight. Syracuse may have to go to the fouling routine here. And just, we're going to let them play out the clock here. Down eight. The roof's about to come off of the rack. You know, every second is big right now. They're going to be able to take this game clock down to about 40. Hard drive. Oh, he got the reverse to go. Jerome Coleman, a new career. Just an awesome effort by Rutgers down the stretch. Last three minutes of this game. Whoa, it's blocked. Nice tip out. Here they come. The Scarlet Knights. They're going to fall by 10. It's been 20 years since they've upset a top 10 team. Two decades since West Virginia went down to the Scarlet Knights. Can you freeze this week for Rutgers? Everybody 
is in it in the Big East. Everybody, including Rutgers, up the grabs. Sherrod threw up an air ball, and uh, the Rutgers crowd making a little statement, claiming that uh, perhaps Syracuse is overrated. Josh Pace. Oh, 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 Kent got a piece of it. Shumper hard to the goal, banks it in. Even at the end of the game, Kent comes right at you. 14 seconds and counting. And a jump ball. It'll be Rutgers' That's possession good. arrow. It's okay to hold on to the ball. If you know you have the uh, possession arrow, didn't have time to even think about a timeout right then. But Rutgers will go to 14 and 7 and over 500 in the conference. 5 and 4 on the inbounds to Coleman. What a night he has had. The junior from Robeson High. The Scarlet Knights send their fans home. Delighted. First ever consecutive wins over a top 25 team. Five teams, I should say. Connecticut goes down, and then Syracuse goes down. Back to back for Rutgers. Better be ready to play if you're coming into this building. Gary Waters has this team on a little bit of a roll, to say the least. Well done. 11 and 1 at the rack. Only one team has beaten them here. And they are celebrating it with their fans.